My name's Mayland and in this video I'm going to talk about the expectations of life, the weight of expectations in life. Go to school, go to uni, get a job, buy a house, get married, have kids, retire, travel, then die. This is kind of the modern kind of idea that train tracks are set in life for us, you know, the way that we should go, the way that we're kind of pushed to go and to live our lives. But one of the problems with this is how could we decide how to spend the rest of our life, what job, what sort of career, what we study at the age of 18 when we've barely had any experience of real life at all. And this also leads to a lot of problems further down the track, you know, like people chasing money, people chasing fame and these sorts of things. And to kind of give you perspective on this, I want to talk about the parable of the fisherman and the businessman. So there was this businessman that was on holiday somewhere. And he noticed this fisherman who had got a couple really nice big catches from his fish, but he had finished early in the morning. So the businessman asked, hey, um, why are you coming back so soon, you know? And the fisherman's like, well, I've caught my catch for the day. This is all I need to keep my family safe, you know, to provide for my family and have enough to eat at the end of the day. And I like to spend the rest of my time, you know, out with my friends, playing some music and spending time with my family. And then the businessman says, well, since you're so good at fishing, you know, I could hook you up with someone and you could start fishing more and more. You could be, catch more fish in the day. You could spend more hours out there. Then you could get more money and then you'd have more freedom. And then after you have more freedom and you start building up your business, then you can start setting up this empire and you can even start buying more and more and shipping worldwide and globally and that sort of thing. And so the fisherman says, why would I do that? And the businessman says, well, because you want money, so then you can, once you have enough money, once you reach this kind of point where you reach the end, then you retire, you spend some time with your family, you go fishing occasionally in the morning, catching just enough to keep you going by and keep you happy, and you play music with your friends. And this, <laughs> I'll just leave you with that story and let you kind of think about it. But this is a very roundabout way to go about life, you know, we're seeing, like, we got, we're working to retire, we're working for that kind of thing and, you know, to be happy in this society we have to be earning enough money, we have to be getting high grades, you know, it's about how hot your wife is, you know, how big your house is, that sort of thing, everything's bigger and better. And then, kind of in school it's like this, you have to do this, you have to do these sorts of things and even in society it's like, you have to do this, you have to do that or else, you know, like you must be these sorts of things. and. This kind of leads to a lot of trouble in school because kids aren't really aware of these things, you know, and when they have to do a subject, they're forced to do a subject that they don't really want to do, that doesn't interest them, that they're not drawn towards, and they're told you have to do this, you have to do your homework and that sort of thing, and then they don't do it because they're lazy. And for me, I found, you know, school didn't really draw me in, it wasn't very exciting for me, I liked a few topics, but I never did any homework and I still managed to get by, which I think pissed off the teachers even more because I wouldn't try, I wouldn't do any homework and they would always say, if you just applied yourself, you know, you'd do so much better. If you did homework and you do much better, but I just kind of winged it and kind of coasted through it, whatever, because I didn't really care about it. And then people that struggle with it and don't want to do it and aren't interested in it, they're kind of labelled as different, as dumb or like with ADHD, you know, they have an attention deficit order, but it's not that they don't have enough attention that they're dumb in that it's just that they are not drawn to that sort of thing and that's not their talent that's not their special thing that's not what they want to do with their life and we're trying to force them in and fit them into a box and kind of crowd them in and say you're either in or you're out so get the fuck in or else you're not a part of our society and you can fuck off and you're just like this waste of space and that kind of thing you know like does it really matter how good your grades are if you don't love what you're learning, if you're not learning things that inspire you, that you want to share with other people genuinely, does it matter how much money you are if you're not truly free? Like people think that the more money you earn, the more money you have, the more freedom you have, the more taxes you actually have to pay, the more weight and responsibility you have on you and all these sorts of things. And the last example that I want to give to th for this is, does it matter how much fame you have if you're not truly loved by anyone. Now, a lot of people aspire or think they want to be someone famous, someone admired by a lot of people. And I thought that I did too, 
but I realized that that is fake love. That's externally focused and they're loving you for what you do. They don't actually love you as the person you are. And we find this a lot with a lot of celebrities and that, and we think, oh, you know, first world problems, oh, it's so hard for you being a millionaire, whatever. But like, these people are probably genuinely lonely and lost and unfulfilled because they haven't found anything within themselves that they, they can get a sense of satisfaction from in life. Like they're looking to other people, they're waiting for other people to rely on them to give them a sense of worth and well-being and a sense of fulfillment in that life. And that's, that's really sad, you know? And, you know, a lot of society is just kind of teaching us, you know, just slot into life, to this life. This is how life is. This is how things go. And if people live like that, then you're just another brick in the wall. So what do you really want, you know, because at the end of the day, you know, you could, you could follow this path, you could follow the path laid out ahead of you, follow all these tried and true methods, you know, get your piece of paper after university to prove that you've got this certificate kind of thing and then get a job and whatever and fit in. But is that how you want to live your life? Because this is life and you could live it according to someone else or you could decide for yourself and find your own eternal sense of what you want from life and from the world and what you want to do. And it takes a lot of time to know yourself and it's very hard. And I spent a lot of time on it and I know myself quite well, but of course there's a lot of things that I still am learning about myself and I'm probably still blinded by it. But it's one of the most satisfying things to try and understand yourself more and to gain better perspective on yourself, why you do things, what actually means something to you and doing things for the internal sense that you get a fulfillment from it rather than doing it for other people because that won't get you so far. For me, I wanted to chase society's definition of what success was without even realizing it. It was just kind of the common, you know, the common narrative, you know, for me, it was like, oh, I either have to be this great soccer player or this great musician, you know, and be the best at that. And, you know, that was just what, what kind of seemed like a good idea to me because the society praised these kind of people. So like, they must have something that I'm missing, but it doesn't matter how successful, successful I am in an external kind of terms or society kind of terms, if I'm not actually help, happy with myself. And I found that the best success is the one that you define for yourself. And it's in doing the things that you want to do each and every day. So for me, I did like music. I do like soccer, but I liked it for certain components and values that it had for me, like health, learning, um, sharing these kind of learnings and knowledge and creating things. And I get a greater sense of satisfaction than I've ever felt in my life from doing things like this from learning and then trying to share it with other people and put it into videos. And it feels very easy and it's not, it doesn't feel hard, but, and I want to do it. And it doesn't, it's not as big and grand as like this, a great pleasurable kind of thing, you know, like if, if I compared it to say porn or video games, it's a completely different feeling. It's not like this big rush and like, Oh, I feel so great. It's kind of like this, this feeling inside here, inside my chest, like I'm Malin and I'm proud to be Malin and I'm proud to do these things and I feel good for doing these things and nobody can take that away from me. No matter what people do or say, I've chosen what I want to do and this means something to me because I've had the experience, I've had the awareness and that's what I'm going to do with my life. So I hope this video helped you. If it did, leave a comment with whatever you think or thought about this or things that stuck out to you maybe topics that you'd like me to talk about in the future. <laughs> like and subscribe, like and subscribe. <laughs> no, I don't really care about that. But I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.